Hi guys, today we're going to talk about what unites Indians and Pakistanis and we're privileged to have India's first art and philanthropy lawyer, Mr. Debitam Bose, who plays an integral role representing clients who wish to acquire valuable art for their portfolios. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Bose. Thank you, Hamza, for having me. I'm very excited to be here and very excited to be talking about a, a very, very, you know, a topic which is close to both of our hearts mm -hmm. and at a very special day as well. Um, so I also wanted to wish you uh, and, and all Pakistanis a belated happy Independence Day. Thank you. Thank you, Toshi. And uh, I'd, I'd like to wish you and all the people of your great country a happy Independence Day as well. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very glad we are doing this. Yes, yes, likewise. So Toshi, let's start with what unites uh, our people. And I think food is, is, a, is a subject which we're both passionate about. So would you like to tell us about what kind of food you like? Yes, certainly. Uh, you hit the nail on the head, Hamza. Thank you. Um, food really is, is such a wonderful, wonderful way to bring people together, bring families together. And as the saying goes, you know, uh, the direct route to anyone's heart is through their stomach. Mm -hmm. And I think this is epitomized in our part of the world. And along with food comes hospitality. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I come from uh, east of India. Uh, right now, actually, that's where I am. My, uh, it's uh, Calcutta, or as we now call it, Kolkata. And um, I grew up here and very fortunate uh, to be surrounded by family, and also, you know, uh, the city has a real, uh, it's well known for the culinary delights that it offers. And particularly at a budget that suits everyone. Mm. Um, so I, I, uh, Calcutta is, is also very known for its sweets, uh, mm. really. The, it mithai, do you call it for, Mithai? Mithai. mithai yes. The Mithai is world famous. The Rasgulla, yeah. the, you know. Mm. Um, and, and, and people also say that as a result, the people, the Bengalis they, that's, who come from this part of India, they, mm. they are very sweet in nature because mm. of the tradition, rich tradition of sweets. Mm. And, then, and we have a strong tradition of uh, food from all over uh, mm. as well. So we have a coastal tradition. We eat a lot of fish. Mm. There's also a strong tradition of vegetables. Uh, Bengalis are very well known for eating all types of vegetables as well, mm. actually, along with their fish. And sometimes people live in joke saying, well, fish is vegetarian for Bengalis. Mm. Um, but of course, there's also tradition of eating meat as well. Um, so it, it has a very rich, diverse set of eating. Um, and, and it's really something that I look forward to. Uh, whenever I visit. Mm, yes, yes, you're absolutely right. And the culinary landscape of the subcontinent is quite similar in terms of the spices they use and the herbs and uh, the way they cook the vegetables. So what's your favorite uh, dish? So Hamza, you know, you'll be amazed to know that I actually have a very strong palate, which is very similar to what you find in Pakistan. Mm. So I, I love my biryani. Mm. You know, uh, and, and Calcutta, has, incidentally, has its unique way of preparing biryani, uh, whether it's chicken biryani, whether it's mutton biryani, um, and, and they have a, a tradition of including potato, aloo, mm. um, in the biryani, which gives so much of flavor. And actually, it's also very light. Um, so that's definitely one of my favorites. And the other particular favorite, you'll be very happy to know, is Nihari. Nihari. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it, 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 that's delicate preparation, you know, the softness of the meat, um, which is again, you know, and probably one more dish that I love a lot as well, which perhaps we both share as well, is tandoori chicken. Mm, absolutely. It's very popular in the UK as well. Very popular. Yes, absolutely. And thanks to our friends, you know, in, in, in the part of Punjab, uh, that's very much they, they have been able to and, and what we also call Mughlai dishes, uh, mm. the influence of the, the Mughals in, in, in you know, both our countries. Yes. Uh, so it's, it's that very delicate 
yet uh, with a lot of uh, spices, but not chilies, but mm -hmm. flavor mm -hmm. um, that really makes and stands out. So yeah, these are some of my uh, favorite dishes. And, and how about you, Hamza? Please, please share. Uh, I would love to know more. Uh, well, I like uh, mutton kadai. That, that would oh, be my yes. favorite Pakistani food. And uh, I yes. like keema. I like uh, yeah, spicy keema. I, I can make it myself now. I learned uh, in the previous few months. Yes, I, a lot of my friends actually have been posting all the wonderful food that they've been cooking. Um, and, and I'm putting it online and everyone's become quite, quite the, the chef. So I, I'm sure as well that you, you'll be cooking. Another very dear friend of mine, his name is Masood, and he's in San Francisco. And he's been cooking a lot. I mean, he was a good cook. But specifically now, uh, because a lot of people are working from home. Yes. Uh, and they, they, are, uh, they have time in hand. Uh, and, and for a lot, it, it's a great way to deal with stress. Mm. To be able to cook and, and you know, spend that time um, he's married, of course, so both husband and wife, they cook together. Uh, but even if you're on your own, I think the, all the preparation, the time mm -hmm. um, as, that takes to cook a, 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 a great dish, mm -hmm. it really alleviates a, a lot of the stress that all of us are going through these uncertain times. Mm -hmm. So I think cooking is, is a great way to uh, combat and food, honestly, I, I, I say this from my own experience, mm -hmm. um, especially now in this lockdown, that's one thing I look forward to is a nice meal um, mm -hmm. during the day. Mm -hmm. It it's really does make a difference. It lifts the spirits. And one of the things that we are doing, actually, so in India, um, and I'm sure it's the same in Pakistan, mm -hmm. uh, the food delivery services has really taken up. Yes. So we have quite a few of those uh, delivery services. Mm. And thankfully, they've been really been very cautious, um, mm. protecting all their staff and, and making sure that it's all safe. The kitchens are safe. And a lot of people have really been delivering and, and ordering, ordering in because they can't go to the restaurants now. Yes. Um, and one of the gestures that a lot of the friends are doing is ordering food for friends and family in different parts of India. Mm, right. So I, I, I recently had my birthday, as you know, and I'm very grateful for your wishes. Mm. And a very dear friend of mine from Delhi, uh, she sent me these two really special cakes um, and then it was delivered to me. And similarly, I had cousins and friends in Bombay who sent me a wonderful food all through delivery. Mm. So... Food, again, uh, going back to what we were discussing, it really touches heart. And it, it's a wonderful gesture to bring people together. Even if you're physically not there, uh, you use technology to bring people yes. together. Yes, you're absolutely right. And you also mentioned earlier that food induces hospitality. And one thing I've noticed in India and in Pakistan and Indians I've met in my life is that our cultures are... they. They form collectivism. They like people to eat together. But in the West, it's common to eat alone. So in India, do people eat alone or do they like to eat together most of the time? Absolutely right, Hamza. You know, it's, it's, it's a shared culture. You know, uh, we, we genuinely believe in the power of sharing. Mm -hmm. and, and whatever, it doesn't matter what, um, how wealthy you are or, you know, we, we genuinely like to share. And the hospitality is uh, something that is absolutely cornerstone of, I think, both our cultures. I have been, uh, ex I have experienced Pakistani hospitality in, in all the places that I travel to or, or I consider my second home. And, you know, eating together is a very important part of this tradition where generations come together, you know, parents, even grandparents, friends, um, children, grandchildren, we all come together, we eat together, we share, we share stories. Um, and that is very, very unique. And I can talk about in India as well, in, in any city that you go, if you're invited to anyone's home, um, especially it's the women of the house who 
spend hours, really hours in the kitchen to prepare special dishes for, of course, their family, but the guests uh, who come. And also in our culture, uh, it, it is linked that uh, guests are known as atiti. Um, um, and it's, there's this very common saying which says, atiti devo bhava, which basically means your guest is the God who comes to your home. Mm -hmm. So any home um, who receives a guest um, is, is blessed uh, by their presence. So that is why um, whoever, whatever position you have in society, whatever be your budget, um, I think Indians, Pakistanis, you know, people from our part of the world, uh, Bangladeshis, of course, also, uh, that I've been to their home. They really go out of their way um, to connect with their guests and, and feed them uh, some amazing food, you know. So, yes. Uh, and something else that I've seen as well, actually, this eating together culture. You know, of course, in our countries, we have a lot of people who are poor and a lot of them even live on the streets. But one thing I've always seen is that, you know, when, I, when people are eating whatever little they have, they're always sharing. Even if it's one plate, you would have people around that plate and they're sharing. And this has also happened to both of us. You know, when we are in our cars and we stop at traffic lights, there would be, you know, beggars or, you know, whomsoever, especially a lot of kids who would come and, and beg. And I made a conscious decision a few years back that I would always carry some food with me it could be fruits, it could be some chocolates, it could be anything, um, but not give money away because you never really know what happens when you give money to them, but it's nice to give food away. Mm. And I have never ever seen when I've, you know, given some small amounts of fruits, whatever, to a kid, I've noticed every single time they've shared it. They've shared it with, it could be their brother, it could be their sister, it could be just a fellow beggar. Um, but this is something which is in the heart of our culture is whatever we receive, uh, especially food, if there's somebody else who's hungry, uh, we share with them. Or if we are in a privileged position, uh, when we invite people home, we, you know, you call it Dawat, um, we, we make sure that we, you know, give our best. And it really is genuine, you know, it's sincere. It comes from the heart. Yes, you're right. And we should all be proud of this shared culture, which exists for thousands of years. And Toshi, you've been a globetrotter. You've been across the world. You've done uh, multiple things. So tell us about your career trajectory. I remember I know you since 15 years and you used to be a finance lawyer in London and New York and you shifted into art and philanthropy. So, so walk us through your different career experiences. Sure, Hamza. Yes, it has been uh, how time flies. Uh, I remember meeting you in our early days when you used to come to London mm -hmm. at our friend's home. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you know, I started my career. Um, I, I was very fortunate that um, I, I consider both uh, India and Britain home. And I've had uh, formative years uh, in the UK. I was, of course, born in India. But education-wise, um, as you know, I, I studied in, in the UK. But my practice as a lawyer started in a law firm in, in the UK. I was with American law firms. Um, and I took a decision. Um, once I worked there, I gained uh, some good amount of experience that I wanted to branch out on my own. And I, I wanted to work in a, a, in a field which I find interesting. I wanted to combine my passion, which is people. I love interacting with people from all different cultures, people who are highly intelligent, who make the success of their lives, and find a way to add value to them. Mm. So the way I found was art and culture. Um, again, it is something that brings people together. It is highly international. It's diverse. Uh, it's dynamic. You work with very creative people, artists from different parts of the world. Um, I, I remember interacting with a Pakistani artist uh, in, in, in New York and we, we had some wonderful, wonderful time. Um, and, and as a result, you know, uh, the interaction becomes more and more richer. Um, 
And so I was able to establish a practice where I would essentially help uh, collectors, institutions like museums, um, art foundations, uh, and people who are in the art world who require independent advice on art when they're looking to buy art or when they're looking to sell art. There's an aspect of confidentiality. There are lots of money that changes hand. Um, so you need to structure the deal uh, in a way that is transparent as well. Uh, it's secure. Uh, at the same time, there are issues of fakes and forgeries, stolen works of art. You require advice, legal advice on that. Mm. Uh, and then, of course, there's tax issues, customs duties that are levied by different countries. So collectors, clients require that advice. But perhaps the most exciting part of the, the work that I got was the travel. You know, I'm uh, till the time of the lockdown, uh, I was fortunate to travel nearly 300 days in a year. Mm. And, you know, I would traverse the world uh, and meet people and, and, and create mini homes. So where you feel you're genuinely connected to different parts of the world. Um, and, and, and that is a great feeling to have. Uh, mm. So, you know, you, you, you learn so much from people and you realize there are no uh, one right way or one wrong way. There are just different ways of doing things. Mm. And you accommodate and you learn and you understand. Mm. And um, then I was able to uh, link art with philanthropy, uh, which has been one of the greatest um, experiences of my uh, career, actually. Because you would imagine a lot of the art collectors in the world are, are very affluent people, but they're also very generous uh, and they give in their own way. And since I had such an international experience and exposure, uh, what I wanted to do is connect all these people uh, within a community and focus on causes that require support and funding. Um, so as a result, you know, I, I focused on education. It's, something which in both our countries it is it's highly sought after and, and people spend whatever they have uh, to educate their children and, and, and make sure that they have the, uh, an education um, so that they can be independent in their lives. Mm. Um, and so I was able to combine my art uh, with philanthropy and essentially get very rich art collectors to become patrons just not just on art, but on philanthropic causes, dealing with education, dealing with um, also healthcare, uh, which is another huge area that requires money. And there's a huge need in our, both our countries. Uh, so that's been my work, which is essentially create relationships, uh, valuable relationships, trust-based relationships, personal relationships, Mm -hmm. and then work with them um, on their art collection, but also show them various philanthropic ventures, opportunities where they can support and be patrons. Um, to give an example from India, um, in the last four years, I've been working to set up scholarships for bright Indian students to study at Oxford. Um, and of course, it's a very prestigious university. The world knows them, but equally, um, and, and this applies to Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, Indians, of course, those who go to such institutions, you know, um, and once they graduate, they really have the most amazing uh, life ahead because of the connections they make, the friendships and, and the academics. Um, so if we can open those doors to less privileged but bright minds, um, you know, their, their lives are changed forever. And, you know, it's a blessing uh, that I was able to work in this area and combine my passion of art and people to kind of uh, channel the resources required uh, to, in, in such ventures. Yes, yes, so that's very noble and I wish you uh, the best of luck in this. But Toshi, you build you. relationships very well. I, I've learned that from you. But what I think is that for some people, uh, they find it difficult to build relationships with other people who they disagree with or with, they, with people they have strong ideological differences with. So what would you like to say to those people? Yes, Hamza, that is a challenge and that's a very valid point. Um, you know, um, there is a very good saying, um, which is true 
is by we can agree to disagree on, on, on certain matters. And I think it's important to, to realize that as well, that it's not possible to agree on everything, um, you know, and, and there will be points of disagreement, points of this uh, divergence. Uh, and, you know, and, and also to some extent, you know, um, that re uh, leads to conflict. But I think, and in this relationship, um, one of uh, the living uh, legends, I call him, and, and of course, uh, a spiritual mentor to the world, I would say. I, I love the words of His Holiness Dalai Lama in this. Mm. Um, that, yes, people will have different views, and yes, um, you know, they'll be unfair. But you hold your ground, um, and, and you believe in the values of truth, love, and compassion. Uh, and, and it's important to forgive. Um, forgiveness comes from compassion. Um, also linked to this is your own ego, uh, which is the driving force to make you sound right or make sure that your belief is the right one and what you are doing is the right one and everyone else is wrong. So if you're able to stand back, and it's not easy, it is very, very difficult, but at an individual level, and when you see the world, when you interact with people, you've seen cultures and you've seen so much what is going around in the world. If you're able to stand back and, and see that, yes, okay, you know, this is, this is what is going on. Uh, let me judge less. Mm. Uh, let, me, uh, let me not get into that because it's not going to resolve uh, this mm. over a very heated argument. It will, it will ruin um, and I'm not going to be able to change his or her views. Not right now, at least. See, time is a very interesting way to showcase, um, you know. And it's important for, for me at, at a personal level to uh, show kindness more. And even if it means that, you know, it may be the harsh truth, uh, but better not to utter a harsh truth, but utter words of kindness um, and, and move on. Uh, that I found has really, really helped me more than anything else. Mm. Because ultimately, it's about my mental health, my mental peace. Um, and it's something that requires a lot of effort, a lot of um, understanding. Uh, and as I said, you know, in the words of um, His Holiness Dalai Lama, you know, compassion, love, uh, forgiveness to yourself. It has to start with yourself because the ego is in you. Yes. You're the driving force who believes certain sets of fundamental facts you think are right or correct, mm. but time shows otherwise. Or you don't want to change because you don't want to be told that you were wrong, you got it wrong. Mm. Um, but again, you know, each to our own. Everyone is different. Uh, so the judgment part is not to judge people so harshly um, and, and self-reflect and, and analyze. And, and yes, there are certain things you will not agree. And, and, and that's where I said, you, know, you agree to disagree and you move on. You know, that's the key thing. You keep moving. It's like time. You know, time doesn't stop for anyone, no matter who you are. Mm -hmm. So you move on, you know, and, and try try to interact again in a different, on something different. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. You're, you're absolutely right. And Toshi, in your experience, you, you've seen a lot of Indians and Pakistanis across the world. Yes. So do you see animosity between them or do you see friendship? Like how is the relationship between Indians and Pakistanis across the world? So Hamza, you know, I have been very lucky to, uh, because I travel so much and, and around the world. Mm -hmm. I have met and, and interacted, and, and they're my friends, uh, Indian, Pakistani, Bangladeshis, at very close quarters. You know, whilst growing up, I've had friends uh, who went to school with me in England, uh, who were of, you know, uh, Pakistani origin um, and Indian origin, of course, like myself. And then even at work um, and, and across. Um, and what... I have found is that, you know, when you're abroad in, in another country, um, you, you make natural friends 
with people who have the same values, um, you know, values of family, you know, a love for the country, you know, um, love for certain sports, love for food as we have explored, you know, um, love for beautiful women, you know, in our country, we have beautiful women, yes. um, you know, love for our, uh, if that brings us together, you know, and, and whether in England, you know, it's, it's, of course, it'll be a lot of fun and, you know, who are you supporting in cricket and etc. But when you sit down together, when you had a tough day, you know, when you require advice, you know, they're your friends, you know, whether it's an Indian, whether it's Pakistani, whether it's Bangladeshi, you know, that is there, but it's actually ultimately it's human to human relationships, you know, what you can share, what the things that you relate to, that, you know, if you're both stuck in another country, in another city where you're working hard, you've had it tough and you're missing your parents, you're missing your loved ones, or you're, you know, you're missing a relationship. Um, you, you open up to, you know, your, your friends who, who are from essentially a shared culture, you know, Indian, Pakistanis, Bangladesh, there's a shared culture. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I've seen this in London, I've seen this in New York, I've seen this in San Francisco, I've seen this in Los Angeles, I've seen this in um, Paris, um, I've seen this in um, Rome, uh, I've seen this in Dubai, I've seen this in Abu Dhabi. I mean, Dubai, Abu Dhabi is really interesting because there, it's a real melting pot. Mm. You know, you have people from all walks of life. You know, it's not just the CEOs, it's not just the, you know, entrepreneurs who are billionaires. Um, you, you have people who are cleaning the streets, you know, to driving to every walk of life. You have Indians, you have Pakistanis, you have Bangladeshis. They work really hard. You know, one thing that genuinely, genuinely unites Indians, Pakistanis, Bangladeshis, you know, um, is how hard they work, you know, when they're abroad and, and, and how much they save and they send all that money back for their loved ones, for their elderly parents, for their sick relatives, for the wedding of their family member, for their own children's education. You know, every single one, every Indian, every Pakistani, every Bangladeshi that I've met, and it doesn't matter how rich you are, okay? You may be a multimillionaire, and then you are supporting a philanthropy cause in, in your country, but you're supporting, okay? You may be a, a, a small time uh, shopkeeper and yet you're supporting your family. Or you may be a, a, a daytime laborer, you know, working in the heat uh, in, in Dubai or in Qatar, you know, and you're saving 60-70% uh, of your monthly to send it back home. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really incredible, uh, you know, how people from our part of the world do that. Um, I mean, I'm sure others also do it, but I've seen this firsthand and that's truly inspirational and it's truly humbling. And I'll, I'll give you a personal example. Um, you know, you've of course met my father and, um, and we, we have a tradition, we travel a lot together. Um, and just last summer, you know, just last summer, uh, we were traveling in, in a beautiful part of Italy called Cinque Terre. Um, and and uh, we, we were having lunch and, uh, uh, we had in, in, in a very, very quaint fish restaurant and, and the, the waiter um, uh, came up to us and uh, he said that, uh, oh, which part of the world are you from? Of course, we're from India, etc. And he was um, from Bangladesh and he's, he's working there. And uh, he said to me that, oh, you know, what are you doing after lunch? And he said, oh, we are actually planning to hire a boat. And, and go around. Uh, Chinky Terra means five regions. There's basically like five parts um, where you keep traveling um, and it's really beautiful. And you can do it on a boat or you can take a train. Uh, and we wanted to do it by boat, uh, which is uh, it's fairly expensive as well. And he said to us straight away, once he got to know which part of the world we're from, and, and again, that human to human interaction, uh, he said to us, that you know, when you go to this particular uh, ticket shop, um, try and speak to uh, the, uh, the assistant manager. He, he gave uh, his name, Giuseppe, and, and mentioned to him about me, 
his name was Ali. That Ali, uh, you're Ali's friends. You know, you are Ali's friends, and uh, just just mention it to to him, and and he will look after you. Mm. And I was of course very touched by that, and I didn't really think too much of it. Um, so that was it. And and then of course you know we queued up to get the tickets, uh, and at the teller there was this. Uh, lady, white lady, and and two tickets, um, and I said, oh, you know, could I speak to you know Giuseppe, uh, and and she was like, oh, how how do you know him? I said, oh, I'm a friend's friend, and I, I just want to talk to him. So he said, okay, fine. He's at the back. Go on, go on. You can go and meet him there. So I went up to him and I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm Ali's friend, and Ali mentioned to come and say hi, and, and I'm here to buy a couple of tickets. And he said, "Oh, you know Ali? Oh, Ali is—he's he's great. He's a great friend of mine. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, is this your first time here? Are you going to be seeing?" And I said, "Yes, it's our first time. And I'm here with my dad, and we're going to be traveling the Cinque Terre in a boat." And he said, "That's wonderful. Great. Have you bought the tickets yet?" I said, "No, no, not yet." I said, "Oh, that's great. Good. I'll sort it out for you." And he organized everything for us and gave us the local residence discount. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Which was just so generous, so kind, mm-hmm. and that's all thanks to friendship, mm-hmm. you know, and fast friendship, and friendship based on our shared culture, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. um, and and this has happened so many times. I have so many stories to share. Whether it's a you know a, a, a kind person, a Pakistani person in New York or in Dubai or in Abu Dhabi or London, you know, we we connect. on our shared values you know and we're all away we're all doing our best um and then we connect on on things uh, that touches our heart yes so yes. yes i would say my experience has been incredible mm very nice and toshi when a lot of indians and pakistanis leave their countries when they go to places like the us or toshi your video is uh, yeah sorry so when they go to the us or the uk or the uae uh, the, many of them cannot speak uh, the local languages that well but with indians and pakistanis hindi and urdu are very similar so they can communicate with each other very naturally so do you think Absolutely. the shared language also plays a role in building connections between indians and pakistanis absolutely right you know um, i i couldn't agree with you more you know this is a one way straight away um that you are able to understand one another you know in hindi and urdu are very similar um and you can understand and talk to each other and and and, and share uh, one's life which is tough you know you're in another country another place you don't have any friends or you know you don't have any family that you can connect with um so it it you know your workplace friends or friends you met on a bus um or 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 you know uh, wherever or just walking or in a some shop um, or or a shop keeper uh, they become your your friends and 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 the reason you are able to have that friendship is because you can communicate you know and and then the other thing is is because of the shared understanding of um the the, the regional language in india and pakistan um, we we enjoy uh, entertainment from both our countries so mm. pakistani dramas are hugely popular in india you know and i myself have watched a few uh, and one? i got completely um as uh, i i love them mm. you know and, and again you know it 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 shows life you know in in, in all respects you know the mm. layers the intricacies the love the you know everything you know and and uh, similarly it's i'm sure with indian um, movies um, yes. that that's a huge hit as well you know bollywood of course is world known all over the world not just pakistan yeah yeah and and, and that's partly because of the language you know it's in hindi yes you know, and, and that's where people can understand um and then the music that's another way that really brings uh, people together you know um of course as you know the coke studios have been a huge huge mm. success mm. Uh, bringing traditional uh, semi classical uh, and then of course music from um, all sorts bringing people together and, and that's been a, a huge hit 
as well. And, and the musicians themselves, you know, who will perform uh, all over from Adnan Swami, to you, you just name it. You know, they've been huge hit as well. Yes, you're right. So, yeah. Yes, yeah. Indians and Pakistanis have pretty similar preferences for art, I believe. They like uh, the same things. Sorry, you cut out for a minute. Yes, can I, you I, hear me, Hamza? Yes, yes, I can. I said that it seems that Indians and Pakistanis have quite similar preferences for art. They seem to like yes. the same things. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, that, that of course, it, it's that shared culture as well, you know. A strong influence of um, Persian culture, um, mm. you know, in, in both our countries, mm. and um, you know, in 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 art earlier on, especially you know from the uh, late I would say 14th century onwards, you know, the strong influence of Persian art, miniature paintings, you know, in in the the courts, and that depicting the cultures of the country. Um, you know, and, and great stories, which were told folk stories or otherwise, which connected with people. And then slowly, as, as the time went, you know, that was adopted by more and more within mainstream. Um, so yes, you know, the, 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 the appreciation is absolutely there. Uh, the aesthetics come from that shared, uh, you know, influences. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you're right. So Toshi, we have so many uh, similarities and so many things which unite us, but still our countries, India and Pakistan, do not enjoy a good relationship as neighbors should. So what can we as individuals uh, do to ensure or at least try that our countries have a better relationship with each other? Yes, you're absolutely right, Hamza. And, and that is the biggest bane and, and, and a real, real misfortune on, on all, all of us, actually. Um, that, you know, despite um, the best of intention and, and so much of shared uh, values, um, there is a huge, huge, uh, at a institutional level, um, you know, at a government level, uh, you know, things can improve. And I think things can only improve from human to human contact. You know, I, I always like to give the uh, analogy of um, what Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, uh, used to say, and, and he was of course influenced by Mahatma Gandhi. And one of the things he said was that, you know, at an institutional level, um, if you can get it right first, uh, so he was talking about racism, mm. you know, and of course we know in America, and recently we saw how the whole Black Lives Matter uh, protests went global. Um, and I think that, you know, people to people, there will be disconnect and there'll be strong ideologies of superior race for them, you know, inferior, right, wrong, whatever. But they were able to get the institutional framework right, which is no discrimination based on color, race, ethnicity, religion. And then that doesn't mean the work stops. Then comes the huge challenge, which is ahead, which is understanding, creating equal opportunities, trying to create a fairer society. So I think in our countries, both our countries, I think that's what is required more. You know, the notion of fairness, uh, the rule of law, um, you know, the opportunity, the support, um, and, and, you know, the, the thought of creating that sense um, of, yes, you know, you, you are proud of your country, you, you are proud as being a Pakistani, you're proud as being an Indian, um, but you also have to coexist um, and have that sense of purpose that it's more than just me and you, but we have a greater role to play in the world. You know, one of the biggest, uh, I think, learning uh, during COVID times is to show how insignificant all the things we thought were important in our lives. They're not, they don't matter at all. You know, we're just, all of us are just stuck home. It doesn't matter how rich you are. It doesn't matter how influential you are. It doesn't matter how powerful you are um, or how poor you are or helpless you are. You, you, you are absolutely helpless. Mm -hmm. So I think for both our countries, I think the interaction uh, within uh, people, 
uh, learning uh, from things which unites us, I think that's a great dialogue uh, forward. But also keep respecting us, uh, each other. I think that's equally important because mm -hmm. over-familiarity is not a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, taking for granted is not a good thing. Um, you know, and, and also, you know, integrity, honesty, these are all values, you know, we, in our country, we, we teach our children, you know, to have a good education, to stand on our feet. Uh, so we still have a very long way to go. Uh, but the, the makers of uh, modern India, the makers of modern Pakistan, you know, they never envisage that this should be, uh, you know, uh, they envisage independent countries, independent, strong, self-reliant countries who are there for one another, who are there to support one another. Uh, but, you know, the reality is very different. We accept the reality. But we can also make sure that we can progress. You know, we, we support our own progress and we support one another's progress. But it will take time. You know, this, I don't see any easy fixes. There are no quick fixes. It requires a lot of vision, a lot of perseverance. And, and ultimately, you know, people just want to get on with their lives. You know, they want to raise their family. They want to have an opportunity. Um, you know, uh, they want to make sure that they live with dignity. Uh, and, and that's true for anyone in the world, and specifically uh, in, in India and Pakistan. And, and one thing I would say is every time any calamity that hits in, in our part of the world, you know, natural calamities that hit Pakistan recently or in India, it's amazing how people rally together. Mm. You know? And the human spirit in that sense is, is truly amazing. Mm. So I, I believe that, you know, more and more connection, human to human connection that we have based on self-respect, uh, respecting one another. I think uh, we have a, a, a bright future for both our countries. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. 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 Yes. God willing. Absolutely. Yeah. So Toshi, last question. Do you think initiatives like uh, Aman Ki Asha and the recent Kartarpur corridor, which invites Sikh pilgrims to Pakistan, do you think these initiatives have the potential to significantly improve the relationships between India and Pakistan? Yes, I, I think that they're all necessary, you know, they, they, they're all pieces of jigsaw. I mean, it's a big jigsaw, you know, so one must appreciate that these are pieces, important pieces to show hands of friendship mm. and dialogue. And again, back to what we were discussing, human to human contact. I think these are wonderful, but it can't just stop there. You know, more needs to be done, um, which requires, you know, more interaction, more support, trade and commerce, um, and, and just that ability to, you know, fo focus on the good things, focus on opportunities, you know, and, and then let that take its own time, you know, sow the seeds uh, for, um, economic opportunities, prosperity, you know, support. Uh, I think those hand in hand with soft initiatives, which are so strong, you know, I think these, these are absolutely uh, very important. But it's important that every one, a step is taken. We don't take 100 steps back. And that sadly happens a lot in our country. We take this amazing one step forward and then something happens, sadly. And then we are forced to take a hundred steps backwards. Uh, and we should figure out uh, how not to do that uh, for our own benefit of our own generation, the next generation. You know, I mean, if you look at the history of the world, um, there are countries who have been able to, uh, to put their differences aside and come together and, and have incredible relationships uh, for one another. And, and there is pride in oneself, there is healthy competition, and also uh, respecting one another to say you're, you're progressing in this area and we are proud, you know. Um, and, and that's really important uh, to, to inculcate that sense 
uh, of supporting uh, one's first yourself and uh, your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. And uh, thank you, Toshi, for uh, giving our viewers your thank you. time. This has been a lot of fun, Hamza, and, and I'm so happy we did this. Mm -hmm. I'm truly grateful to you and nice to see you and, and discuss things which are very close to our heart. Um, yes. And that too at, at a very, uh, very momentous time where both our countries are celebrating our Independence Day. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that it, it's, you, you chose a great topic and a great time. So I thank you. And I, I hope it's been fun for the audience as well. I, I'm sure it will be. And it's been a privilege uh, to, talk to you, talk to you. And I think I, I really pray and hope that this conversation can be a small beacon for other Indians and Pakistanis who might have animosity between each other. And they think that at the end of the day, if we just talk, perhaps we'll feel differently about each other and we'll like each other, regardless of yes. our identities. Absolutely. That's a prayer. That is a fervent prayer. It's good to talk. Hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let's end on this note, Toshi. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Hamza, for having me. Take care. You too.